Fitz Houston says he understands why women read romance novels. He says they want to become lost in the fantasy of having an exciting relationship like the ones in the stories. Romance novels give women the hope that they can find such a hero in real life. Fitz, what do you think women are looking for? What kind of guy do you think women are looking for? Because these novels sell in the millions and millions of copies. What are women looking at these novels for that they, they don't get, I guess, in real life? Well, I think they're looking for an interesting aspect in life. Um, someone who's not predictable, someone who keeps, someone who keeps their life very exciting, uh, something to keep it from falling to, into that humdrum mm -hmm. energy. Fitz, what kind of woman appeals to you? Well, I like a woman who likes variety, because I'm a Gemini, and so I think I am pretty spontaneous in the things that I do, so I would like some, I have uh, an interest uh, in people who just love to be flexible. Now, do you suppose that women who read romance novels are looking for kind of an idealized guy, and that perhaps the real-life guy can't measure up? Well, I don't think the real-life guy can't measure up. They just have to look a little more careful to find him. I think everyone, every man that is depicted in a book does exist somewhere, mm -hmm. but it's just if, whether or not you're patient enough to find him. Do you think that there are women also who don't want to commit? Yeah, I think it's a two-way street. Uh, I think when the two people who do want to find that committed relationship, they, they draw each other like a magnet because when w you're looking for a short-term relationship, I think they draw each other as well. So, in other words, you, you think that... At, cert at a certain time, at a certain place, you can walk into a room and pow, just like that. Well I, th well, I think you can find that feeling to guide you that that may be possibly the person you should look further into as far as a lasting relationship. Now, as far as Cupid knocking you off your feet and you rushing into a marriage, I don't think you should make that quite that yeah, move good, quite that that's quick. That's a good point, Fitz, <laughs> because a lot of them wash up. Sandra Kitt has built an enormous following with 13 published novels. She is the first African-American author to be published by Harlequin. And Serenade, her 12th book, launched Pinnacle Books multicultural arabesque line. The latest book is called The Color of Love, about an interracial relationship. And the tough part about interracial relationships and the love in those is, is it always the race first? Is that always the barrier the couples have to get by first? Actually, for the couple, that's not the barrier at all. That tends to be the barrier for everyone else. Ah. But it does become an issue that they have to explore and try to be honest about because it is going to be a factor. They cannot look at each other as if it doesn't exist this that will create problems and what I wanted to do in the color of love was to create two characters whose relationship was predicated on them simply liking each other for the people that they were not because of the race that they are but they they do um, have conflicts with family members people that they work with which they overcome that's the whole point well you know what maybe you can help me with this <laughs> uh, Fitz you and I have short hair but I gotta tell you the three guys that are sitting here all have hair down to their <laughs> shoulders how come Sandra all the romance novel cover guys, most of them, mm -hmm. are guys with long hair. Well, I think that that's probably true and a trend right now in the historical novels, the ones uh, that are placed 100 years ago, 150 years ago. Uh, there's something very alluring and sexy, sexy about a man who has hair that's blowing in the wind. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little suspicious when they're longer than mine. but <laughs> <laughs> when all three of these guys yeah, are. I, but I think it's very appealing for, for, the, um, for the reader to, to see that, that image. It's, it's very exciting and different. But you do see it primarily in the historical novels. I write contemporaries. And um, I tend to, my heroes tend to have the shorter cuts, more contemporary like, Kind of like Fitz? Like Fitz, sure. Okay, Fitz. <laughs> you uh, got the look. When you're, doing the, when you're doing the posing and when you're the guy that's on the cover, what's going through your head while you're posing? Well, I'm trying to make it, just as you do in acting, trying to make it a realistic situation and make sure the emotional commitment for the picture or the pose is there because if both models aren't into the actual pose, I believe that the viewer of the picture will realize that and it won't be as appealing. Okay, I'm gonna take a call but in a second, but Fitz, I gotta ask you, there are men who are watching the show now who say, of course, but I don't look like that. I don't look like Fitz, I don't look like the two Johns, I don't look like Jim. Of course it's easy for these guys to talk about moon and swoon and June and logs <laughs> in the fireplace and making love with the one you want. I just look like an average guy. What's, what do you know, Fitz, that the average guy doesn't know? About well, women. I just about women. Yeah. Well, I think uh, that's a good one. I think just the fact that you just believe in yourself that you'll find the right one and that you can be attractive to someone else, and I think it's just about really having the confidence in yourself 
that you will attract that. I think if the normal guy feels that he is normal, quote unquote, uh, that he will not be attractive. And therefore, if you're not mm -hmm. attractive in your own eyes, you won't be attractive to anyone else. Okay, and you say, and you say what? And sometimes looks aren't everything. Uh, what's appealing for a hero also is not necessarily looks, but personality. If it's mm -hmm. someone who's really centered, if he's sensitive, if he's caring, mm -hmm. if he uh, really makes an effort to understand the woman, the heroine. Huh? Um, if he's Where's the line, though? Because if you're too sensitive, if you're too caring, then you come across as weak need. Well, I think that you, it's sort of like a judgment call. You have to be able to look at a person as a whole person and look at all parts of them. Um, it's perfectly possible for a man to be very masculine, very strong, and also be very sensitive. That's a matter of paying attention to each man, each woman as an individual, and not stereotyping them. If they're absolutely gorgeous and handsome, then you assume all of these other things about them. You have to get to know people. Um, love at first sight is wonderful, but um, it's not the same as loving, and sometimes that right. takes time. Uh, sometimes you have to start out being friends before you can really be lovers. Let's take some calls. Yes, it really does. I just want to explain something. First of all, you have to realize that when people read these books, and we are talking predominantly women, they read it to be entertained. They read it to be, uh, to have a happy ending and to give themselves a couple of hours of pleasure. Um, I do not believe, and I've never spoken to anyone who then reads these books and uses it as an absolute model for relationships or even for finding one. Uh, that's not really fair. The romance novels are, for the most part, fantasies. That's what they are meant to be. Exactly. We know exactly what our right reader expects. <laughs> they want a few hours of entertainment. And you but have a lot of people out there with fantasies, believe me, and, and they are trying to live this lifestyle. Believe me, I have dated one of them. I have, yeah. I, I have had a woman tell me, I want life, I want, well, I'm paraphrasing, but basically, basically she said, I want our relationship to be like a romance novel. And it's, it's basically impossible. Let me ask the guys, do you think that that's true? Do you think that women's expectations are too high? And especially if you look like a guy on the cover of a romance novel, do they expect you to always act like a cover? I don't. Well, what I th yeah, I agree with what he just said. Uh, I think that it really, if the person is, who is reading the book constantly, if they lose track or touch with reality, and they feel that there is that the book is their reality, then that's the problem that the gentleman is facing, yeah. that the person has lost touch yeah. of what the book is saying and what real life is. I always wanted they're to trying ask to mention. I always wanted to ask an author of you've got fifteen books now, right. fourteen of which 14. have been published. Mm -hmm. How often is the love of your life? between those pages. <laughs> well, I, I tend to draw a course on personal experience. They always yeah. say you to write about what you know. So um, I tend to infuse the hero with, with personalities and characteristics of, of people that I've known in the past. Same thing with the heroine for myself. And then the love interest and the story and the romance and the sensuality between them is something that you just make up. You can, you can add a lot is to it. Is it true that sex scenes are hard to write? Um, after a while, they can be. I mean, it, you know, it only There's only so much you can do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hi, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Ashley Brown. Romance novel cover guys and guys who want to be this morning in Philadelphia. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Hello, uh, Mr. Kennedy. I'm Hi. 75 years old, and I love romance novels. I sit back for about an hour, whatever it takes, and I'm young again, and I'm flirting with the, uh, the uh, people of uh, men with hairy chest and all that stuff. And I know it's, it can never happen to me, but at least for a little while, I am young again, and I'm in love again. And I, it keeps me alive. That's all I have to say to sweetheart. It just... <laughs> Thank you. That's Thank you very much. About, is that what it's all about to you? Yes, it is. That's exactly what it is. It's escapism. It's a few hours of entertainment, of pleasure. Uh, gives you a very uplifting feeling. The stories end positively. Uh, that's the best kind of entertainment. And finally, the author of The Color of Love and 14 other romance novels, including Harlequin, uh, and, uh, and the also uh, The Color of Love is the latest one. We thank you, Sandra, very much for being with us, and good luck to you. And thank last you. but not least, out in California, Fitz, you're writing yep. a screenplay, huh? Actually, I finished uh, two different ones. They're sequels of each other, of course, and I, being a writer, relate somewhat with Sandra as far as developing a character role model to carry a series of films together. Very best of luck to all of you. Stay with us thank as you. AM Philadelphia continues.